Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics from reviews of comics new and old to history to anecdotes really wherever our whims take us. The Scarecrow. Okay, so what happened was several things. We talked about the Enchantress and how there is both a Marvel and a DC version and for some reason in those comments a lot of people were talking about how there's also multiple Scarecrows. I'm not sure why he was the character who rose to the forefront, but he was. And then recently we also did a video on Joker's Asylum, which was a series of one shots about Batman villains and one of the stories was about the Scarecrow. I liked it. All of this sent me down a scarecrow path. It reignited my love for the scarecrow. And that led to looking into the scarecrow's 24 year absence in between the golden age and the silver age of comics. Yeah, he vanished for a bit and I was curious as to why. What happened? And how much has the scarecrow changed? Then I found a fandom page full of essential scarecrow readings. And you know I had to read them. I'm chock full to the brim of tales about Jonathan Crane now. I wish I could say that there were a treasure trove of tales out there that we've all been sleeping on. We need to go read them right now. But what it really showed is that the Scarecrow has had a slow evolution and that his potential and the scope of what it means to inflict fear has often not been utilized to its full potential because it can mean so much more than a quick jump scare. You can get really deep and play with different types of fear and the ways to inflict it. Or you can do what some of these stories do. There's a tale here that kicks off with hats as the main focus. Hats, you know you need to know. So let's examine the Scarecrow's absence and return. Cause why not? Spooky scary. It's always time for a good scare. It's scary how underutilized the Scarecrow is. Huh? Huh? Jonathan Crane's gonna come get me now. But before we get started, I'm Sasha, and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Join us on this comic book journey. We talked about the Scarecrow's first appearance a while back on this channel, but let's cliff notes it. Jonathan Crane was a professor who taught psychology, and his methods were kind of intense. But his colleagues made fun of his clothes and appearance because he spent his money on books and not on keeping himself up. So he became a supervillain and robbed those people because how dare they? He'd be a scarecrow, a symbol of fear and poverty. Take that, snobs. The gap and serious lack of Crane began during the Golden Age. His last appearance there was in Detective Comics 73 in 1943. So yes, a wartime comic. And of course the Scarecrow gets involved in stealing some money for war bonds. This story claims that the Scarecrow is back by popular demand. I mean, it can't have been that popular if his next appearance was 1967. <laughs> so what was this tale? Well, it's one that showcases that they're not entirely certain what to do with him yet. It's like there's an awareness that his design is cool. The premise has promise, but how to execute? Not like this. This story is called The Scarecrow Returns and it's by Don Cameron with art by Bob Kane. It decides that the Scarecrow was a teacher, so yeah, let's use that, let's build on that. But for some reason it acts like he taught elementary school, because his whole crime involves him leaving these clues on these little mini chalkboards, those little slates, and involves him using rhyming words, the first one being hat. H-A-T. Probably no one yet has ever feared that three letter noun. And they won't after this either. This tale also taught me that Bruce Wayne has something against hats, specifically ladies' hats. But Linda, you know I think most women's hats are terrible. That's exactly why I'm bringing you to this hat show. This relationship is doomed. These hats are amazing, by the way. See how the wards influence women's styles? No wonder they say civilization is in danger. Bruce one, hat zero. The scarecrow shows up to steal some hats, cause reasons. Thou sure make people afraid of hats. He steals some of the old ancient jeweled ones that were going on at this exhibit. This was a big day for hats in Gotham. And he leaves a clue. The next one is Matt. Batman and Robin don't solve any of these really, they just guess right every time. The Matt means wrestling, because of course, what else could it mean? The story also has the word Japanazis in it. You can definitely feel the wartime. The Scarecrow gets the war bond money made at this wrestling event, and the next word is Vat. Well that can only mean dry cleaners, because he's gonna take them to the cleaners. Look, if this story's gonna go down there, I'm gonna get down there too. But he traps them in the vat and guess what? He then calls them bat and brat. Ha! Rhyming. They escape the vat and catch him when he's trying to steal a jade scarecrow from a Chinese shop. And they end by writing the words that's that on his chalkboard. Mm. I'd vanish too. Rough. Dare I say, painful. This story does not do much for the Scarecrow. It's not that it's silly. It's that it makes him blend into the background with the rest of the villains. Any villain could have been swapped in here based on how it's written. The whole fear motif feels confused. Like they're not entirely sure what to do with it yet, but want to do something. I'm not surprised that he was shelved until the Silver Age, especially with everything else going on that led to that shift. Many characters when they were brought back in the Silver Age were given a second wind. After the Second World War, there was a decline in popularity of superheroes as a genre. And a 
crisis of morality around comics. So many things changed. The comics code was created and a new era dawned, the Silver Age. And many characters had to be presented in a different way. And others were just given a bit of an overhaul. Just tweak some things because they needed it. It was well into this era when the Scarecrow returned. So how did he fare when he came back? The Scarecrow was reintroduced in Batman 189 in 1967, written by Gardner Fox with art by Sheldon Moldoff. In fright of the Scarecrow. Also, look, his costume has been tweaked ever so slightly. It's still a Scarecrow, but the work around the mask has become more sunken and eerie. Holy cliffhanger! The Cape Crusader in the grip of one villain he is compelled to fear. That is a good tagline. Unfortunately, the cover promises you something a bit more serious than you're going to get on the inside. And that's because of the influence of the Batman TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. The series was doing quite well. It was an influence on other shows around it and also on the comics. At times, there were attempts to leverage the two together, such as the coordinated launch of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl, which we've talked about on this channel, Card and Link. But largely, it resulted in bleed back into the comics with characters and items. For example, now there's Aunt Harriet, who was always a very confusing and Adding family members for Dick is an interesting choice, and apparently, at the time of this recording, we are doing it again. 2021! Let's get some tropes from the 1960s. Actually, just secret sibling or secret family member is just tried and true classic and so hard to pull off in a way that's credible and compelling. I may be compelled to fear, but I'm not compelled to care. What this results in for a lot of Batman stories is that there is a sillier tone. This opening teaser page dubs the Scarecrow the Prince of Panic. Let me sit with it a bit. Do I like it? I don't know. I think I do. I like it more than Made of Might, that's for sure. This story recaps the Scarecrow's first appearance, which is helpful as he had been gone for so long. For those ex nerdy amongst you, they do actually reconcile where they kind of infer a reconciliation between Earths 1 and 2, and that's that the events of Detective Comics 73 happen on both Earths, just in their time frame, and then, you know, went on from there. Just for those people who needed to know, because it was going to keep them up at night. I got you. But what is the Scarecrow doing here? Well, he's messing up Dick's summer job. Dick is coaching kids as a playground instructor, because you gotta drill those kids as they climb the monkey bars, when he spots a submarine going into Gotham Park. Welcome to the Silver Age. Submarines for all. Dick goes to Snoop, and Bruce and Alfred happen upon them while they're driving up in their ice cream truck because Bruce on a whim decided that the kids needed ice cream and why just go get them you know like a tub when he could buy a whole truck he's flexing on all these kids and they kid up and go to stop the scarecrow he's there he took the sub over here so that he could dig up his loot from a past robbery gotta go in style I guess now this story is important because it is the first use of a fear gas or toxin it's not called that but it's the prototype to what it will become and that will become one of the scarecrow's staples so this story is important from that standpoint so I can see why it ended up on the essentials list. What didn't stick around was his calling card. Fear of falling, an innate fear of mankind. It's engulfed them both as I leave behind my calling cards. These straws. Snow crimes at barns, or fairs, or carnivals, or on a windy day, or- He also again leaves them a series of rhyming words as clues, so it's kind of a callback to the last story. I'm not sure why they made this a thing. Part two, the first in comics appearance of the Bat Computer. Look at it, bask in it. Thank the TV show for it, both in it appearing there and the fact that the show put the word bat in front of everything to be campy. And then it bled back into the comics and ended up being implemented more seriously with more gravitas. Most of the story is filler. The Scarecrow's motivation makes no sense. He just goes around and does things cuz. We do get to see Batman and Robin fight jungle Jungle Cat's on an arc though. He's just making people afraid and doing stuff cause Scarecrow. Really all of this is a distraction so that the Scarecrow can rob a millionaire, which is a bit of a callback to his first ever story when he was robbing all those rich professors that he worked with. How dare they mock his book collection. Only at this robbery he's puffing a scary pipe at that billionaire. <laughs> no, stop puffing that smoke at me, it's scaring me to death. The dynamic duo show up and defeat him and then we don't see the Scarecrow again until issue 200. Which was not on the essential reading list, but I write it anyway cause I'm keen, I want that extra credit, that scarecrow credit. See me after class, Dr. Crane, or reverse that. I don't know. And after reading it, I can see why it's not on the list. The premise is that the scarecrow has invented a pill that when taken will make other people fear you. It's another step in the evolution of how the scarecrow inflicts fear, but the execution is clunky. It does feature Alfred snapping Bruce and Dick out of their terror by reminding them of their trauma and dead families, which is also how they overcome the pill in general. The scarecrow has them tied up and he's got guns attached to trip wires. And so Batman looks at them and goes, the gun, a gun killed my parents. No more fear. And Robin looks and is like, a tightrope. A tightrope killed my parents. <laughs> Yay, trauma. The Scarecrow can't overcome his fear of Batman, though, and that kind of becomes a through line for the character at times. How Crane does and doesn't feel about fear is something that isn't adequately explored, in my opinion. Like his own personal fear is not about other people. He's super into other people being afraid. The Scarecrow has had some rough tales, and when you read these, you can see why some didn't take him seriously. But that potential is always there, and you can see it in how people keep 
adding to it. A lot of it seems to be how the person conceiving of the idea thinks about fear, what it is to be afraid and what makes them afraid and what they think makes other people afraid. With a strong understanding of the true insidious complexity of fear, you can craft a great scarecrow story. It doesn't just have to be about ghosts or toxins, though you can do fun stories with those too. But you can get a bit gimmicky with those. You can also create a really complex story around different sorts of fear. For example, social fears, or even the fear of one's own thoughts and manipulating the environment around people, which could play especially well at the time of this recording. The Scarecrow is more versatile than people give him credit for, and you can do a lot with him. Much more than the generic thief, let me steal things, or people were mean to me, so I'll make them pay. Though you can evolve the latter, but again, that takes a little bit of work. You can also do some interesting parallels with Batman, since Batman also utilizes fear in his own way. In conclusion, the Scarecrow was awesome and underappreciated. These stories were silly, but had some fun and funny moments. And the Scarecrow has evolved a lot over time. And how we view him time of recording is a result of the slow amalgamation of all Scarecrow's previous, and also owes a decent amount to some adaptations. Shout out to the 90s show. In terms of his comic book disappearance, I can see why he vanished for a bit. I also now have the urge to wear a really big hat in front of Bruce Wayne. Gonna find a ridiculous hat and sit in front of him and wear it. Tell me your favorite tales down below. Favorite version? I do have a fondness for the Batman Begins version from the Nolan verse, which it's not, you know, I have my issues with the Nolan verse, but the Scarecrow isn't one of them. I like that version because you get the kind of credible side where you can believe that people would buy into Dr. Crane. Patients suffering delusional episodes often focus their paranoia on an external tormentor, usually one conforming to Jungian archetypes. In this case, a Scarecrow. But you also get the mad side, Scarecrow. He's here. Who? The Batman. Tell me your thoughts. Are you not a Scarecrow fan? Just tell me things down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time day spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.